everyone for joining me today. Uh, so today, uh, probably I should share my screen and show my presentation. Okay, uh, so today we're going to talk about an uh, interesting tool which is called, oh, I can uh, hide this stuff, uh, which is called Apache Beam toolset and data flow uh, service from Google Cloud Platform, uh, which is managed service, uh, which uh, help us to run the code which we're going to write or use uh, for today's demo. And so we're going to talk about the some theory concepts behind this tool, and we'll have a demo part where I will show you some use cases, and uh, we can talk about some technical aspects of this framework. Uh, quick introduction from myself. Uh, I've been working on Serve uh, for four, almost four years now, and I've been using uh, Beam and Dataflow maybe almost three years. Uh, so we, uh, on, on our project, we built some uh, solution with like a data platform, which process some internal data for our customers and for some internal projects. So we've been using the uh, Apache Beam a lot and we found uh, this tool very useful for our daily routines uh, tasks. So I decided it will be also be might be useful for people who is interested in Python and in some areas like data processing or even driven uh, patterns, processes, etc. So here is our today's agenda. Uh, yeah, we will have some quick introduction about the what is actually Apache Beam is used for, uh, what are the use cases for it, and um, what the problems it's actually aimed to, to solve. Uh, then we're going to cover some Apache Beam concepts, uh, some abstract uh, entities it exposes to use. Uh, we're going to cover some streaming processing uh, months or some issues we might face with during writing code or uh, services, which will be running in streaming mode. So it might worth to discuss it as well. Some demo part in Google Cloud Platform using Dataflow Runner. Uh, I will explain later what is actually runner is and why we should use it as a separate service. Some uh, common patterns, yeah, uh, in this section, we're going to maybe cover some typical issues or things to consider uh, when we write pipelines using Apache Beam framework. Of course, questions part uh, where we can discuss, yeah, all of your questions. Uh, and but feel free to stop me and maybe clarify something if you missed uh, some things which I'm going to explain uh, just to be on uh, on the same page and do not feel lost. And uh, we provide you some links, useful links which you can use later if you are interested in this uh, framework. Okay. Let's first distinguish, uh, since I have two parts in my title, like it, Apache Beam and Dataflow, let's define what those uh, terms mean. Uh, Apache Beam is open source framework, also it's unified model for defining uh, batch and streaming data parallel processing pipelines. It means that you can write a pipeline with the same code in the batch mode and streaming mode. So we will get uh, it later. And Apache Beam, it also uh, exposes and provides SDKs uh, using different languages uh, that allow you to build this pipeline. And this pipeline is actually a cyc uh, cyclic graph, which we're going to deploy and execute. So uh, to be, let's uh, summarize this part with Apache Beam. Apache Beam, it's a way of defining in a declarative mode, what we're going to execute by runner, which we specify during deployment time. Uh, and also it's uh, some uh, way of defining streaming, processing, and batch, of course. Dataflow, it's a Google um, Cloud managed service, uh, which helps us easily execute Beam pipelines without thinking a lot of infrastructure part and uh, the it also provides some useful integrations from G Cloud itself. 
So uh, it's not only one option to run Apache Beam on. Uh, you can also use Jira Trial, of course, from a local development perspective. It's very useful. Uh, there is also Spark Runner, Apache Flink Runners. So this framework or Apache Beam actually allows you to uh, write the uh, definition of pipeline, which you can execute on mul multiple different runners. Uh, but if we compare, let's say, Dataflow Runner and Spark Runner, those are just different um, infrastructure setting, but the behavior will be almost the same with some maybe small uh, dif uh, differences, but uh, we can describe it later. Okay, yeah, and yeah, and extra features which Dataflow also might uh, provide for us. It's of course uh, workers auto scaling in built integrations like monitoring, uh, logging, and etc. Actually, all integrations that we can uh, we have in Google Cloud we can use there. Uh, okay, let's maybe uh, deep dive into Apache Beam features, uh, how and when we can use it. Uh, as I already said, uh, the Apache Beam uh, features uh, are like it's a unified model which uh, we can use like for batch jobs and stream jobs. So pretty useful feature, and with really small tiny changes, we can use both um, type of mods and solve really similar problems. So for example, a uh, very common example for Apache Beam, like it's just count word count. Uh, task, and we can solve this task using batch mode when we're, where we just read some predefined uh, source, like a file or a database, maybe a record, which contains some string uh, with words, which we're supposed to count. Or also we can count this uh, data in streaming mode when we when we subscribe our pipeline on some Kafka input or in, uh, Google pops up service. So it will allow us uh, to consume and process and produce some results in stream mode uh, almost in real time. And it's portable. Yeah, this is what I already said that we can run this pipeline against multiple runners. And the easiest way, uh, personally for me, is state of law. And also it will be a good option if you already have some uh, services uh, in Google Cloud because it will be easily to integrate. Extensible, yeah, of course. So we can write some custom uh, stuff, which we can uh, we can extend the features from Apache Beam itself, and uh, we also can write our part of pipelines in different languages, such as uh, Java, Go, Python, and probably and some is SQL uh, features. We also can read um, write in SQL uh, mode. And open source, open source, yeah, of course, so it's an open source framework which you can track uh, by the open uh, okay, roadmap. You can see uh, what the plans this uh, community has. There is a good uh, like a community around this framework, and they are open for uh, new ideas and contribution, of course. Uh, open, open, uh, Apache Beam is not a brand new uh, tool set, but it also um, has uh, it actually, actually it, it took some inspiration from previous C or current existing sim uh, similar tools like MapReduce, uh, MapReduce uh, framework, and uh, Spark. Let's say so some things you might find uh, really similar to what, as I mentioned, um, frameworks have. And uh, like as this uh, bottom part, it's a Apache part or section where you have some integration and you can reuse some components from the mentioned services, uh, but it's not a, a, like a, a total list of the services, of course, but say, there are a lot of uh, different services from Apache community. And from the Google part, uh, Google also in the 20 of uh, 15, uh, they produce a paper uh, which describes the uh, methodology of their view of how they actually we should process uh, data in streaming mode, uh, which um, abstractions we can apply during this uh, work. And it was also as a uh, idea to create this Apache Beam framework. Uh, here we, have, uh, we can uh, see some use cases on the left part. Uh, for example, stream and batch analytics, 
Actually, there is, uh, to, uh, maybe if we can get start from this part, we, you can do with Apache Beam everything that you want. It's a, just a framework. It doesn't uh, limit you in some way. Uh, it's a Python code that you can write and do whatever you want. Just expose some abstractions that uh, help you to process the data in parallel mode, in streaming mode or batch mode, uh, plus some useful features. So some of the use cases is just a data enrichment, uh, machine learning, anomaly detection, and more. So actually machine learning and anomaly detection, it's uh, that you can uh, execute or write or like uh, define. Apache Beam itself doesn't expose such feature out of the box. So you just expose a few concepts, which we're going to cover a, uh, a bit later. So uh, it helps you just to focus on the business logic uh, doesn't uh, doesn't um, it also helps you doesn't think about how you actually can write uh, this parallel uh, code in order to utilize multiple workers threads etc and of course we can use in multiple uh, runners it's also useful uh, because uh, different communities can extend and provide some um, di uh, distinct features from specific runners uh, Here is on the top of this uh, diagram, we have uh, examples or list of SDKs which we can use in order to write this um, graph or this pipeline. As I said, it's Java, Python, Go, SQL, and maybe some more that uh, this community is going to pr present. Uh, typical pipeline consists of input and output. Uh, it's a pipe of some transformation we apply on some data. So usually the pipeline Apache Beam will be pretty similar to other beams, other pipelines. You just have some input uh, transformation or input data, some transformation you need to apply on the data and some output. Uh, and the output can be defined in any random format uh, that you can, uh, which you actually like. Uh, JSON, uh, Avro, put above, there is no limitation, just a uh, byte, uh, raw byte string that we can provide with any format. There is here and build uh, like a readers and writers from the framework itself, which uh, Apache Beam community supports and maintains, uh, but you, uh, there is a way to easily write your own writer if you have some um, case for doing that. And yeah, for the abstraction part on the top here, we have a variety of runners and a variety of execution environments. So such a local environment where you can just want to run some tests. Uh, and of course, some uh, environments where you go and run this pipeline in production. Here is a typical or simple graph uh, of the pipeline job in Google Cloud environment. Uh, just example, we read some data from PubSub, we, let's say, decode it somehow, we might also validate it, split by, uh, split, do some transformation against it, uh, and may, any other steps we might uh, execute. So we will uh, go deep uh, to this part later, I will show you the features from data flow, which you can leverage, and you also might ask something if you have questions. So uh, we are going to switch next section, Apache Beam concepts. Uh, before we switch into this part, uh, chapter, maybe you already have some questions you want to, you would want to, to clarify. Okay, uh, if sounds like no, uh, so far, so we, here is a basic concepts on the left part such a pipeline, Pardue, pipeline IO, aggregation, runner source. So what is pipeline? Pipeline, it's a graph. It's a declarative um, graph, which we construct using SDK. Uh, literally, it's a JSON file, which we download to some environment uh, with some meta information, uh, plus some information where we can uh, get our actual Python code, which is supposed to run uh, for specific steps. Uh, so pipeline itself, it's a just a graph. Uh, when we use data flow, we also can use term like a job. Job is just an instance of pipeline uh, when, when we, which we have when we submit submit um, 
data for job. Pardo. Pardo it's abstraction. Uh, it's a parallel uh, function or functions that we can apply on each individual element or message, let's say from PubSub, uh, which will be executed in parallel mode, um, by, which, uh, which, which you can provide uh, by our code we write, the some custom code. So here's a, actually this is a place where we, where we define our custom logic and custom transformation. Uh, I will show you some examples, of course, so those uh, terms will be much clearer to you later. Pipeline IO, it's a, um, just an uh, abstraction which declares uh, the type of your pipeline. For example, if you use Kafka in pop, Google Pops up, uh, typically it means that uh, your pipeline will be run in streaming mode. That, that means that you have to think about some additional things like a windowing, uh, which we're going to cover on this right part with advanced concepts. But uh, the idea here is that based on type of input data, you will have either batch mode or streaming mode and use uh, different features from these models. Aggregation, this is an uh, abstraction which uh, we can use in order to group data by some logic. The simplest example is count. When we read data from some source, we read this data in parallel mode uh, from even multiple workers, uh, which are in Google uh, case, just a virtual machines. And then in order to count them, we need to group them in one place and aggregate and use this aggregation information uh, downstream if you want to, or just produce this aggregation as a final output of our service, of our pipeline. Yeah, runner, it's uh, just a um, tool or service which uh, knows how to execute the beam, this graph we built uh, using SDKs, Apache Beam SDKs. So it just provides uh, the way of executing it, plus some extra features, uh, let's say uh, auto scaling, networking, some uh, maybe restriction or limitation based on per permissions, et cetera. And actually it's uh, responsible for pro uh, executing your code, of course, that we <clears throat> wrote. Source, <clears throat> source, it's a actually data we're going to read uh, and use downstream of our uh, steps in our pipeline. So, the main idea here that we can make this abstraction and Apache Beam will not know about, about where we're going to read data from and how our data will look like. It just knows to have some uh, abstraction methods which we should implement in order to define the source. But when we use inbuilt transformation, we, we are not supposed to do that. It's already inbuilt. Maybe some questions about basic concepts. Okay, for advanced concepts, it's mostly related to the streaming mode, uh, such as even time. Uh, even time, this is an event, uh, or this is a time when some uh, event uh, or just created. For example, when user, taking this example, when user click on site some button and we want to make some monitoring or uh, like a aggregation by some numbers of clicks, this is a time when user clicks, uh, makes this click. And when we process this message, let's say using some streaming pipeline, we might consider is the even time and do aggregation, but even by by even time or by processing time. The processing time this is a time when actually we already received the message, because there's this there might be a delay. Uh, user might click on the site, but there was some network interruptions or just a, a bad network connectivity. So there there is a difference, and that's why we have two concepts or two types of times when we use beam uh, such as even time and processing time windowing it's like some uh, advanced technique uh, and very useful technique when we use streaming pipelines because actually streaming pipelines are infinite data and we don't know when we can uh, like by default if we don't use any window and we don't know when we can actually produce any results on it because this is an infinite stream and we need to define, split it by some uh, tools, tools, and then uh, make some aggregation based on specified windows. Windows can be like a, a data-based or time-based. Uh, let's say each 15 seconds, 
we do count on the data we read by, uh, during this period and then produce some output for some consumers or to write these uh, results somewhere if we have some such need. Uh, and another example might be like a window based, based on data count. But let's say for each 10 records we read from input stream, we produce this result by some logic. And another example is a session based windowing and triggers like when we specify some keys which we assign on the data and based on the hash keys, we do some calculation and aggregation. Watermarks and triggers, uh, I probably will uh, show you a bit later with some uh, diagrams and uh, visual, it will be easy to understand them if you have some visual examples. But those are very core concepts and uh, useful things when you write or uh, stream in pipelines. Here's a first uh, example of batch pipeline, uh, how, uh, which does very simple stuff. We define first input uh, data. It's not a stream pipeline because I provided uh, fi finite uh, or final structure, which we know that it contains three elements and Beam will know that it's a, not a stream pipeline. So we we are not supposed to do any uh, sophisticated window in here, defining some processing time, even time. We just do and apply some uh, aggregation or some transformation just out of the box without thinking about any advanced stuff. So what this pipeline will do, it just will create input uh, parallel collection of data. Then it will execute this Lambda on each element in parallel mode. So we cannot realize that it will be ordered and will be executed in ordered way uh, or sequentially. Uh, we just need to think that it will be executed in parallel somehow by the runner. And uh, here I didn't provide any runner settings. So it means that by default, it will be executed locally on your local machine using direct runner. And here I provide the next function we, which we call uh, on each element, which this uh, step will produce. So in this example, the output will be uh, next next one, uh, just a simple transformation based input data. Uh, here is this. Uh, be, yeah. So we uh, finished this part of basic concept. Maybe you wanted want to some clarify something about, about the mentioned concepts terms. Uh, you actually might be a pretty uh, maybe surprised by the, this syntax, uh, but it might be also familiar to you if you have some experience with uh, Apache Airflow framework. It has a bit sim uh, similar stuff when we define the order of tasks and we define a duck. Here we don't have the name duck, but the actual duck it's our pipeline, uh, and we build this pipeline on this with um, statement, and once this with block. Uh, gets closed, we will have uh, the final graph which we can execute. And since we didn't specify any runner here, Apache Beam will execute it just immediately against the direct runner. Okay, um, I'm excited to probably present some streaming part. And in order to explain some things that I already mentioned, uh, I probably need to visualize this uh, stuff. Uh, so I took some uh, animations from the uh, official presentation of Apache Beam. So it will it helps really helps to understand how the streaming data gets processed actually. So for example, in this example, we have fixed time uh, based window for streaming pipeline. So let's say uh, we we read data from Kafka or PubSub. And here is the time uh, the, when these such events actually occurred. Um, so our messages are just uh, some numbers which we uh, consume in our pipeline. And let's say that each two minutes, we should uh, get everything that we read and do some transformation and aggregation uh, against it. In this case, example, we have uh, just a count uh, uh, against the all numbers we received during this two minutes period. So in this case, we have uh, these two messages, which uh, produce result 
with the sum of them as a sum. And uh, yeah, next message, uh, next period will be this type of messages. So here we actually use processing time based calculation. So we are not care about when this message actually happens, but we he here in this example, we care about when we receive this, uh, those messages in our pipeline. And based on this, so this setting uh, is defined based on your business logic. Uh, there is no like a common uh, maybe things to use, but it's all, all about your business needs. If you don't care about when this event happen, happen it, and you care only about um, how, it, how to produce some results based on this data, the simplest way just use processing time-based windowing and triggers. And so actually the trigger, it's a, some mechanism from Apache Beam that helps you to know when you can emit your data. So in this example, our trigger will be the time point uh, of two minutes. So when we when each two minutes passed, the trigger fires some results as that we specify, uh, we calculated by some custom aggregation or in build like a sum, uh, mean, etc. Uh, let's switch to another example. Uh, this example. Uh, uh, shows how to process data based on not processing time, but based on even time. So this case might be useful when you really care about the time when event um, gets created. And in this case, we specify that we uh, we want to, let's say, process messages that happen at, let's say, by the uh, last few minutes. And if we receive some message uh, that is older than this threshold, we reject it discard and do not consider during our calculation. In this example, we discarded uh, the number with nine value. Uh, and the way how we define that, it's called watermark. Uh, watermark, it's a difference between time when events uh, happen, it, occurred, and the time when we actually process this message. So ideally, uh, here's uh, ideal okay, watermark when we process messages just immediately when they uh, occurred. But since there is a network stuff, we or there is other stuff that uh, lead to we have some delays on the way how we process streaming mode. We should actually uh, we uh, supposed to specify which uh, data we consider as late and should we consider this data during further processing. And this time may be uh, okay, arbitrary, up to your needs or up to your business logic. So this is a, a place where such concepts like a windowing, watermark and triggers will be very uh, useful and handy. Uh, okay, here is our demo section. Uh, for the demo purpose, I've already executed data flow uh, job, which will uh, just account the words which I'm going to send in the input pops up record. So from graph perspective, here is a sequence. We read, we read data from pops up, which is input stream. We decode it, we split it, do apply some transformation. Uh, and then we, yeah, we group it by the word itself to understand uh, how many words with the same name or value we received during specified window or period. Then we apply aggregation count on the data uh, based on window setting. And then we might have multiple outputs. Uh, each of our transformation might produce some errors. And the typical way of handling errors is just to create another stream of errors and then handle them somehow. So uh, you can provide the outputs from each transformation here and then collect all exceptions or errors. Uh, for all of them and do one unified uh, handling process for all of them or just separately for each separate box. And box here just as some step uh, we, uh, we have in the code. So it's like an error pass path and here's a, a happy path when we uh, successfully processed and get uh, good results from count aggregation. So then we, what we can do, it's a, just a, a final part where we just send or write this data somehow, somewhere, 
we can do some uh, preparation, uh, formatting, and then write it either downstream or some database. Uh, it can be any output that you want to. So uh, here is how the code will look like uh, for this pipeline. Uh, before actually we uh, go to the code itself, we, uh, there is a uh, way of specifying the parameters. Probably all frameworks have some uh, tool that uh, enforces us to use and provide some parameters in some specific way. Apache Beam uses, in, when we use Python SDK, uh, it uses a standard arc parse module, uh, package, package, sorry, uh, from Python, where you can specify some custom parameters. And by default, it has some inbuilt uh, known parameters, like uh, some, let's say, from runner specific parameters. When we use some specific runner, you also might provide some setting, like uh, maybe a number of workers you want to spin up some networking configuration, actually any configuration which will be related to specific runner. And of course, your custom configuration, which uh, in my case, input topic uh, or input subscription and output topic, since we need to know where we get data from and where we should push it to. And here's an example how I submitted the data flow pipeline. I just try to run this script we specify some parameters like my input subscription output topic, plus some uh, runner specific information uh, that will be useful in order to spin up and provision infrastructure for this. We specify data flow runner, some region, workers, project, Google Clouds project, and some uh, additional information. So this is it, uh, what we actually need in order to run the pipeline on some environment. Uh, once we know that, we can go to the code itself. Uh, so we saw on this graph some names, and this is also the name of steps that we use as a kind of references uh, in order to understand where some process actually is defined, or in order to debug some code and read some metrics using uh, data, uh, Google Cloud metrics, let's say. So in this case, we use a uh, standard in build transformation for reading data from Bob's app. Uh, here we have messages. Okay, this message, it's a very interesting concept. It's called P collection, which stands for parallel collection. It's unordered uh, immutable collection uh, with the data which we read from the transformation we specify on the right side. Uh, then we can use this P collection as an input for uh, next downstream uh, transformation. So in this case, when we decode data, we we deserialize data because uh, we receive it in binary uh, mode, and we need to decode it to work with it later with downstream transformation. So here we just decode it uh, using standard Python decode mechanism. Uh, go we here we create a new P collection, which is a copy of, not a copy, but it's actually a brand new P collection of data, which we, which we transform here based on input collection. Then here's example with a two, one input and two outputs. This is example uh, from this part, when we apply some count and we might have some errors or some uh, data without any exception. So here we divide out uh, our stream input stream on to, into two outputs which will be easier to uh, reuse later. And we can reuse it from multiple other transformation if we need to. It, it doesn't mean that you should run uh, each parallel collection only once. You can use uh, uh, how, much, how many times you need to based on your need. Uh, so here we have example of some uh, coupled transformation, which you also can refactor, let's say, and create one uh, Unified transformation, and we can use in multiple pipelines if you want to. So it means it means that you don't need to uh, write these all lines all each time when you want to have some similar use case. So there is also techniques which we can use in order to make some abstractions using Apache Beam code. And here's a transformation uh, which we use in order to lock our exception the exceptions which we might have during some Purdue call. 
Remember uh, when I, I was explaining Pardue, this Pardue part, it's a part when we define uh, some custom function or class, which we want to execute on the worker side uh, on element wise on each message that we receive from uh, PubSub. I will uh, show you how it will look, how it looks like later. Now we probably should understand the, uh, the orchestration of our transformations. And the last part uh, here, the actual output we produce by having this pipeline. So the actual output, this is the output we have by applying this transform set of transformations. And this is a right of subtopic part. So let's have some examples. So actually what we are doing here, what we are doing here, we are ta taking data from input topic. Uh, the data will look like as just a words, which we're supposed to count based on five seconds period. Here I specified that each five seconds, we are going to receive some results on consumer side. So in order to uh, see such results, I created consumer script, which will be subscribed of on our uh, output topic. Since I already submitted job in data flow, it's ready to consume some data. All that we need to, uh, we need to execute consumer, which will listen this uh, subscription from this topic. And we need to produce some data. Uh, I'm using here uh, in build G Cloud, a CLI, uh, but it, it can be done by any process, uh, even by REST call, HTTP call to the it pops up API from Google. So it can be any or some inbuilt libraries for your language you use. So here I'm sending the words in this sequence. I also spe specify some error word just to show you. Uh, I have some logic dedicated. If we receive the error word, we write some temporary exception just to show you the uh, this uh, error handling technique I'm uh, having here. So we send uh, this number of workers and uh, by five seconds, we should receive some results here and read. There also might be, it might be uh, a bit longer since uh, because of some network delays. If you uh, run this chain of tools in the one internal network, it will be much faster. Okay, here we have some results. Uh, let's have, have compare them. So we send one word with word one, word two, and two words with word three uh, values. So here we see that we received word three two times uh, by this message. And here we actually see result for one message I sent. Let's just uh, do next thing. I'm going to send the same message three times and our expectation here is all these messages that I sent just sent will be grouped in this five second uh, window. So we will have a bit different results because we uh, sent uh, with same words three times, right? Uh, let's wait for this result. So it seems like, uh, yeah, we, since we cannot guarantee the when window gets started and gets closed, uh, seems like we uh, had in this example, two windows uh, in which we send this data to, or by which uh, window, uh, Apache, wind, uh, Apache Beam uh, split it or marked our data. So in this example, we have two output messages. Uh, I sent three messages, but it grouped it in a two windows. Uh, and we can see that uh, word three happened four, uh, four times uh, for one window and word three happened two, occurred two times for first window. So yeah, it's un undefined behavior here because we rely here on processing time, on the worker's time, not at the time when we produce this event. Uh, but we can change that uh, and use even time semantic in order to have the expected results. Uh, so it also depends on the, your business needs. If we don't care about this uh, different windowing part, we can be okay, good with having this setup. 
And uh, let me show you some maybe useful things about data flow. When we use Apache Beam, we can click on such boxes and see how many messages we receive since we sub, uh, since the time we submit this job. So now we can see that this job received five messages. Uh, by our demo, we sent uh, one, uh, yeah, we sent four, and the first message was just prior, uh, before we started this meeting, just to check that everything is ready for the demo. Uh, here we can see how many messages we process during specific um, phases. And here we can see that, let's say, in all such steps we receive, okay, here we split it, our message string into the actual words. And we receive that uh, on the some intermediate phase, we had uh, 30 messages. And here we have also, let me show you some things. Okay, yeah, once we group it uh, by the unique names, we started having them as a 16. This is all elements, some intermediate presentation of the data when we have some word, specific word value and how much, uh, how many times we saw this word. And then we can see that we have two outputs. Those are exceptions, which I uh, created just for demo purpose. And we can see that we have four exceptions. And we can also log them. And uh, if we open this bar, uh, inline error, demo exception. So each time when it recognizes recognizes uh, error word, it just creates some, some exception, which leads to the hidden data uh, in this part. And this is a final our output. We don't have here any logs, um, but we can see how many messages we produced. Uh, there is also in build a uh, framework or subset of tools which um, exposes a matrix mecha mechanic for the entire pipeline. So we can define, uh, we can try to hide this guy. So we can uh, use our custom metrics, such a like in the code, and then our runner is responsible uh, to pre present it somehow, somewhere, somewhere. So in the case of data flow, it has a dedicated uh, panel or bar when we can define the metric name and then some values for this. So it will be might be useful for some debugging stuff. Uh, so we can uh, run these metrics only in the back mode or as the business need, and then establish some monitoring, uh, some maybe alerts based on some metrics, if we have some specific uh, use case for that. In this case, we can see that this all these metrics belong to the step called split. This is a place where, where we split our in, initial string, which we send into the one message into the word or a list of words. Uh, probably that's it for the demo part. Maybe you would want to uh, ask something. Maybe you have some feedback on this. Okay, I hope this uh, demo was clear enough. If no, you can always reach me out and I can share maybe some snippet samples if you want to. So just don't hesitate to do that. Uh, there is also some common patterns which I would maybe recommend to uh, consider when we write code using this framework. Message validation, this is a common thing actually for all services. We uh, usually write uh, just to be sure that the message uh, is valid in terms of business logic or in terms of the code we are going to execute later. So usually we specify this validation the very first or second step once we deserialize uh, raw data. And then based on this validation, we can produce two outputs, either errors or uh, valid data. We are going to transform them. Uh, exception handling, yeah, sorry, login setting. Settings, uh, this is uh, some implicit thing that we need to think about uh, because when we uh, setting, when we specify some setting on Python logging, this setting should happen on the worker side, not the site where we submit our pipeline. In my case, it was local machine. 
So I cannot uh, set in and specify some handlers, logging levels on my local machine because eventually the, the logger uh, instance will be created on the worker machine. So the way how we can do that, uh, let me show this is the custom class which we used in order to uh, create some exception and do some uh, aggregation. So this is a typical part do class, which has some life cycles methods, which are very similar to what we have in Py, uh, unit test frameworks, like a setup tear down. So setup will be called one once the worker is ready to process some data. And here is a place where we can create some clients uh, networking configuration or logger configuration. Uh, and here we specify our custom stuff. And here we can release some resources which we allocated in the setup uh, method. So our worker will call it uh, once we, let's say, uh, click to cancel our job or submit or our job is going to fail. Uh, so we just need to define that here. And here is the main method where our code is going to be uh, located. And here is actually the code <clears throat> which uh, led to our exception uh, be presented once we face with the error word, we write this exception, which we locked uh, later on. So back into the common patterns, we covered logging and exception handling. Uh, exception happen handling is a useful thing if you want to uh, handle all exception in one place and uh, do maybe some sophisticated uh, logic against it. If you don't care about it, you can just log this exception where it's ha happening and do not create any uh, additional uh, pre-collection of the exceptions. In my case, uh, and in production, we do this kind of stuff when we produce exceptions in one unified mode with one unified format, we prepare some exception record to be able to handle them later. So in this case, uh, we have the strike set block and then we yield, uh, this yield is actually uh, we have named it outputs here, and we can define multiple outputs, how many we want to. In this case, we have main output, which we can access later, which will contain the valid data without exception. And here we have some data we marked as errors. So each record uh, we're going to receive from this collection will have only exceptions from this class or part two function if we use Apache Beam terminology. Uh, yeah, important thing about pipeline compositions that, yeah, as I said, you can also write some transformations that will, uh, which will contain some common steps and you want to reuse in multiple pipelines because you, you might uh, write multiple services uh, and do ch pipeline chaining when you uh, just delegate some specific responsibility for one job only, and then you might want to reuse some common code. And in, in order to do that, you can uh, expose some transformation as a one class. Uh, also, also, we need to know that our Beam code will be used in a uh, threaded environment, and you, we should write and think that uh, our code should be thread safe. It means that you want, if you want to access some common resources, common variables, you need to either lock them somehow or use transactions in order to not uh, get some race conditions issues, type of issues. Some performance optimizations might be useful to know about uh, the, some client management. Uh, this is about when we create some IO connectors like clients to databases um, and any IO type of clients. We might want to do that on um, this uh, methods level, not on the level when we receive each word separately. Because uh, if we uh, do this in that way, we might uh, just um, create connection from each message and it will create some uh, big load on the uh, resources you're going to use here. So it also can be applicable for HTTP connections when you create some sessions on the setup level and then just reuse them uh, in the stateful mode. Uh, internal network, yeah, this is also as a common thing for the applications which uh, we can deploy in the one is a data center or some common region which we can connect in, and use internal networking uh, addressing and this is very 
helpful technique that can speed up your uh, entire solution. So it's not common common only for Apache Beam, probably it's also common for other type of applications we built. And once additional thing is which is badging, uh, this thing uh, is very might be useful when you don't want to, let's say, write some data individually to some source, but you might uh, prepare it with some small micro batches or big batches, and then write some batch in one in one go. So uh, it's, you might consider this. There is also inbuilt uh, transformation in Apache Beam, which helps uh, you to batch the, your input data. Any questions, guys, regarding this chapter? Okay, let's then switch maybe to common questions, uh, which we have probably in the chat. Let me open them. Okay. Uh, so some of the links you might be interested in, yeah, Apache Beam website, which uh, pretty looks good. It has also some play, playground where you can uh, play with the code uh, in different languages uh, you, have, you, which you would like and which uh, Apache Beam exposes. Uh, but it's actually also very easy to install on your local, just a pip Python package. It doesn't have any binary or external heavy dependencies. So just a lightweight library you can test with and play with. The data flow model, this is a paper which I uh, mentioned uh, previously. Uh, it, you might be interested in it, uh, to understand why it's done in that way and what issues this um, framework is aimed to solve or some edge cases. So there is also a YouTube channel I would recommend to just watch, uh, watch, watch uh, if you would, would like. It's a Beam College, uh, some community, this is an open community which regularly performs, uh, performs some sessions about the Apache Beam framework, some uh, use cases, um, some companies that use uh, Apache Beam framework also might be uh, running some presentation. So there is a good uh, option to communicate and uh, put some uh, messages into just, let's say, YouTube streams and very cool thing from this community. And it's the store, uh, all the session, previous session is ch this channel. So you might uh, just search for some specific use case and you might be, uh, like you might be able to find some uh, presentation about the topic you're interested in. And one, uh, I'm also put here the book um, that helped me to understand some stream concepts uh, and they, was, they were very useful uh, to get the ideas of Apache Beam. This is a book called Designing Data Intensive Application. Uh, it's, uh, generally speaking, very useful uh, book from Martin Kleppmann to understand some basics about data processing itself. And the specific chapter is dedicated for the streaming process, batch, batch and streaming processing. And many more resources uh, that you can find either uh, our Udemy platform and corner store. I also found there were some interesting courses uh, about this topic. So there are a lot of resources uh, to uh, play with. And want to say thank you everyone to be here today. Maybe you still uh, have some questions you want to clarify. I encourage you to ask. Uh, hi, yes, I have one question. Uh, what difference between uh, Apache Airflow and Apache Beam? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they have the same task, but uh, describing in different forms. Uh, and uh, what's the difference? Yeah, uh, they have yeah, some similarities. Uh, I would agree with that, uh, but they go, uh, aim to solve a bit different problems. For example, in our project, we use Apache Airflow just uh, as an orchestration of batch jobs. Let's say we, because uh, Apache Beam and Dataflow doesn't have any mechanics to trigger by some schedule, let's say, if you want to run some job by schedule. Uh, and we use we should use some uh, scheduler for this, which might be, uh, in this case, used using uh, Apache Airflow. Uh, also, Apache Airflow, uh, they just recently uh, introduced a mechanic which will allow you to trigger deck by the result from previous deck. Uh, but uh, this, this was already done in the Apache Beam out of the box initially, uh, when you can just uh, chain 
your services in one uh, big stream, let's say just to chain one Apache Beam job, stream jobs, and uh, it will be producing some data, which another data flow job will be consuming. And this is a very uh, useful thing from uh, the Apache Beam out of the box. So the main difference is just uh, maybe the way which type of abstractions they these two, two tools provide and some edge cases uh, like we also have some concept very similar concepts like runners in um, Airflow and Apache Beam, but they just solve a bit different problems. But of course, so we can uh, use Apache Airflow to process some batch data. But I just would be in, uh, interested in how uh, easy it would be right to the, the code uh, to process data in streaming mode. As, as far as I know, there is no such uh, things and concepts like a windowing, which very handy when you have streaming uh, mode or streaming type of task to solve. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah. Do we have other questions? Um, nope, nope. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mikola, uh, for uh, today's uh, performance. Uh, uh, on behalf of uh, every participant, I would like uh, to say that it was really interesting uh, to listen to information that you shared with all of us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining our event. Uh, hoping to see you on other community events. Uh, uh, wishing you a great day ahead and see you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye. See you. Good. Thank you.